Okay, that does it. Trine said it was going to be here a week ago, and it's still not here, and I'm just sitting here waiting to go on an adventure. No, no. I'm not getting stood up. I'm not. You're getting stood up. I can do adventures without you. Oh boy, Trine 3. You would not imagine how excited I have been for this game. To play it, to review it, just to see it in general. After Trine 1 and 2, and this being one of my favorite game series of all times, and with the relatively recent release of Trine 4, I wasn't sure where the series could still go, so I was very excited to see what it would have in store for me. And after playing through Trine 3... Oh boy, here I go shitting on things I love again. Let's begin with the positives. The game is still absolutely beautiful with scenes and set pieces that make you pause for a moment just to take in the visuals. The map between locations is this incredibly detailed wooden block map you can run around in, all looking like it's a handcrafted wooden board game with intricate moving details. Everything that you interact with feels vibrant and alive. Oh. Oh wow, it feels, it feels so real, like I'm really there. Oh, this is incredible. This, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, so realistic. Help. You'll start with a level carefully crafted for each of your starting three characters to help you get caught up. If you're new to the series, it functions as an excellent introduction to mechanics, and if you're an old hand like me, it will help you come to terms with the 3D environment. But right away on this map, one of the first problems with this game comes crashing through the door like the Limeade Man. No one invited you. In the original games, collecting the experience points was completely optional. You could work your hardest to track down each and every one, scouring the entire level so you could power up your heroes, unlocking new and incredible abilities that changed how you interact with the world around you and solve puzzles. For the third installment of their game, the devs made a very interesting decision. They decided to get rid of the RPG mechanics in their story exploration puzzle RPG. For the entire story, the mechanics and abilities you start with are the mechanics you will have for the entire game. No new way to interact with the world, no moment where you have a universe brain as you're able to overcome a puzzle in an interesting and unexpected way because you leveled up the right things. This means all of the secret hidden treasure chests with special items, those are gone too. An entire third of what made Trine the beautiful series that it was brutally defenestrated. What? Oh, uh, what? You don't want me to... Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess people might get kind of upset if uh, a third of the game is missing and there's no reason to explore anymore, but, you know, they really didn't... Oh, oh, you still want them to be able to explore incessantly. Okay, calm down, calm down. We won't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, there's still collectibles to be picked up. In fact, there's more of these trine angles than ever. Because now, the story is locked behind finding enough of them. If you haven't explored a level and found them, go back and do it again. And again. Until you've found enough to unlock another level. This takes a jackhammer to the foundation of the second third of the game, its story. Sure, the Trine story was always somewhat cliche, but it was the heart and joy that had clearly gone into the experience and the banter and interaction between our three very different heroes that made it special. Whether you had collected the experience you wanted or not, the story could go on. Sure, you had the option in the menu to play missions again, but the story was clearly written and paced to encourage you to keep playing and experiencing the world. And with beautiful, long stories, that was great. But now, progression is locked behind triangles, so the story has to come to a screeching halt while you play through a few levels you already finished to collect a few more Doritos. The pacing is not helped by the problems with the later levels. I'm on to you, triangles. When I come back in a minute, you're getting defenestrated good. Wait! 
To help with throwing off any semblance of the beautiful flowing narrative that defined a series, there are now small side stories that are disjointed points of the story that arrive out of nowhere and fall at no particular point in the story. At first, these side stories are really neat. They're more dedicated levels. You only have access to one member of the Trine, similar to the introduction levels, but more focused and with exactly the same puzzles. Yeah, they can't add new or more complicated puzzles because they got rid of the RPG system, so the entire game suffers from the only way it can get more complicated is to add more obnoxious combat. This series was never known for its combat, but the third entry seems to have completely misunderstood this. If you're really unlucky, though, they'll implement a physics puzzle around the night. Hey, check out this weird thing I figured out you can do with the night. That's a pretty weird glitch. Feature. What? Feature. I already coded like three, four puzzles using it. You can't do that. It's a glitch. It's Feature. not able to... Feature. <sighs> it's a fun and interesting game feature for top tier players to exploit. How do they work? The new emphasis on combat sees a weird state where the only character that still even feels like themselves is Pontius. The wizard has lost all of his powers from the previous games, left with the ability to conjure a single box. No plank, no multi boxes, no triangles that float in the sky, no moving things around one box. He can smash it onto the ground, and that's the extent of his abilities. There is no room for creative solutions. One box is how you were intended to solve the puzzle, and one box is how you will solve the puzzle. They even got rid of sneaky physics glitches you could exploit before with one box. For instance, if you were standing on something and wanted to move it, you couldn't hit it with the box because you were on it. But if you jumped and then hit it with the box, the momentum would carry through. Now, the instant you hit something in movement due to your box, all momentum stops. This was clearly programmed this way, despite implementing the knight's physics glitches as gameplay mechanics. Everyone can wall jump and has the same jump height or arc, so the thief loses her mobility strength over the other two. All of her arrow upgrades are gone, so she's useless in combat. Her grappling hook has been severely nerfed to only attach to specific points the devs intended her to use it now. Oh, and now when she moves, the grappling hook's rope in and out, she can pull things towards her with Amazonian strength. That's it. That's what her puzzles are now. Attach rope in the intended place, pull the rope, maybe attach rope somewhere else to hold it there. Only the knight got to keep the majority of his kit. Now this might, cynically speaking, have something to do with his kit being trash in the previous games. But his charge stayed and got stronger, his shield stayed and got stronger, his shield glide stayed, though it was slightly toned down in strength. His sword combo is more powerful than ever, he gets the same ground pound the wizard can make with boxes, except it's his entire body and he becomes invincible for the duration. By the end of the game there are barely any puzzles, focusing far more on straight combat challenges that favor the knight. If there's one thing the team still know how to do though, it's write a story. I went into this game confused about what the story could even be. We've saved the kingdom from a ruin and an evil lich, we fended off an invasion of goblins, we stormed the goblin fortress to rescue the wizard's wife. What else can we do? Save the kingdom again? From what? From the Trine. It's always been discussed in the series that the Trine was one of three incredibly powerful and ancient artifacts that no one understood or knew where they came from. The game explains that the artifacts are actually a prison containing the oldest and most powerful evil wizard ever to exist, and we start the game by accidentally destroying the Trine and letting him out! The Trine and the Artifact of Body were both great heroes who fought to defeat the wizard and their spirits trapped in the prison with him. This seeming sentience and benevolence of the Trine is actually one of those heroes who has been aiding us this entire time and now we must piece the Trine back together to gain the power to face the return of this unkillable wizard. The story was something I had never expected, and it was stronger than the previous two game stories combined. And then it ended. What? What? Four hours. 
and the vast majority of that time came from padding, trying to hunt back down enough trine angles to enter the final level. I was effectively done at, with the game at the two and a half, maybe the three hour mark, and then the game just ends. The final level is a boss fight. And it's probably the coolest boss fight the series has ever had, actually incorporating puzzle elements into the fight against an absolutely awesome looking foe. What a unique design! You recover the first shard of the trine and the characters physically state that there are two more, meaning you're a quarter of the way through the game assuming three shards and a final series of levels to reach and defeat the wizard, and the game ends. This $22 game. This was not a game, this was an extended demo. Papers Please had several times the story and content for half the price. That big current hit among us? Five dollars. Infinitely more enjoyment as long as you have friends. This year's bra other breakout hit, Fall Guys? Two dollars cheaper at twenty. Want something with more story and actual involvement in the world? Subnautica costs three dollars more at twenty-five. Infinitely more content, just as beautiful, an organic story that you uncover yourself on ending all for three extra dollars, and still in a full 3D environment. So, what happened? Well, let's go see what the devs had to say for themselves first. Hi guys! With the massive amount of feedback we've received for Trine 3 The Artifacts of Power in both threads and reviews, we felt it was necessary to respond with some facts and brutal honesty. This will be a long post, so please bear with us. Ah, so we're already taking the we're going to respond with some brutal honesty to criticism. Not apologies, you need facts and brutal honesty. Always. The top response. Right off the bat, I will say that we are proud of the game and what we have achieved overall. Good for you. We think it's a fun game, and we don't think it's too expensive either, considering all the elements we have been able to put into the game. It's more expensive than every game previously, and you took most elements out and added nothing. What? However, our view is perhaps skewed. No. And we are now realizing that we have been looking at this perhaps from a different perspective and that many players do not accept that. We still think the game is good, but the cliffhanger story and the relative shortness of the game are valid criticisms, but ones we didn't realize would cause a disappointment in this scale. Sorry! So you realized it would cause a disappointment and a backlash. You just thought you could sweep that under the rug and now you're sounding pissy because you can't. I hope this post will let you understand why we made certain decisions and why the game is as it is. Back in late 2012, we set out to do Trine 3 in full 3D, bigger, badder, and better. We took a big risk with the 3D gameplay implementation. It was to be a massive improvement over the previous games in several areas. We have always been ambitious, and this time our ambition may have gotten the better of us. If your goal was ambition, then why is all that you accomplished putting it in a 3D environment? and nothing else. You took out every other element. This isn't we implemented 3D and everything that there used to be and the game is short. This is we stripped everything out of the game, but it looks really pretty and we made it 3D, guys. Okay, it's not that hard to make a game in the Unity engine of this style look pretty. Obviously, I can't do it, but it's not that big of a deal compared to what you didn't do. Trying 3, the Artifacts of Power, has ended up costing nearly triple that of Trying 2, over 5.4 million US dollars. We have squeezed everything we could into the game. There's nothing left on the table. We initially had a much longer story written and more levels planned, but to create what we had envisioned, it would have taken at least triple the money, probably up to 15 million US dollars, which we didn't realize until too late and which we didn't have. So you're saying your management is poorly handled and not very good at their job by this. Because there's nothing left on the table and all you can suggest that you were still going to put in was more levels and more of the story. You know, you should not there was more of the story. You're a third of the way through this story, hypothetically speaking, probably more like a quarter. So no shit, there was more on the table, but there's also everything you cut from the game on the table. Did no one in your management team sit down and look at the extra cost it was apparently going to take to do this game in 3D and go, hmm, hang on. We made this much money off of our previous games. We're projected to make this much money off of this game. Here's what we can afford to put into this game and not ask some questions. 
that's suggesting that we should be kind to you because your management is incompetent and doesn't deserve their position. So we did not intentionally make the game short, as many have said, in order to make money off a of future DLC or whatever. We tried to make something too ambitious and it ended up financially impossible. What we sold on Early Access was the realistic version and what we promised is what we have delivered in our opinion. Now, I don't know what they promised. I couldn't find listings of what they had promised. If anyone sees these, please send them to me. But, no, you promised a game. You promised a full, fleshed-out game. You haven't provided that. And you're still, to this day, when was this posted? 2015. Five. Five years later, charging for this. This should be a $5 game. I don't give a fuck if you paid $5.4 million. It is not our job to fund your development. It is your job to make a product worth buying. That's how making products work. If you don't make a product worth buying, you go out of business. That's why management matters. And again, you want us to take the blame for your incompetent management. The finished Trine 3 Artifacts of Power game might not be as long as we had hoped initially, but something we are very proud of nonetheless, and generally around 6-7 to seven hours is what we think new players will spend on the game on average. We're aware that some players have completed the game in less than that, 4-5 to five hours for example, and we accept that. I'm sure you can speedrun it much faster too, but so you could in previous Trine games, and in most other games too. This is possibly the most disingenuous argument I've heard since Sense of Pride and Accomplishment. It's short, and but some people can play it faster, yeah. Some people, and you can speedrun it faster, but that's true with every game. <sighs> yes. That's like arguing that a new entry in the Tales of Symphonia is only 10 hours long. Not Symphonia, but the Tales series. Tales of Symphonia, Tales of Basaria. It's an iconic uh, RPG series, you know, that involve 40, 50, 60 hour gameplay sessions to complete them. But, you know, if they released one that was missing most of the RPG elements and party system and interactive dialogue, but mm, it was six to seven hours long, maybe eight to ten hours long for most players. But yeah, you could speedrun it much shorter, but everyone can speedrun games much shorter. That's the basic argument they're making here. Trine 1 and 2, hang on, how long to beat? Trine 1, average time to complete the main story, six hours for a full story. Trine 2, average time for the main story, eight and a half hours. A complete story and cheaper. Trying three, the artifacts of power, main story, average completion time, four hours and 44 minutes. So the concept of them saying, what was it again? How long? Generally six to seven hours. It takes about six hours for main plus extras. But if we want to bring main plus extras into it, that brings trying one up to nine hours and trying two up to almost 12 hours. So you've hacked so much of your content out. And then just out of my own curiosity, trying four, oh, what do you know? Main plus extras back up to 11 and a half hours. Almost like it's a real game again. So this argument that, oh, it's not actually short. There are plenty of great short games out there. Yes, there is. Portal's a great short game. You're no Portal. As for the cliffhanger ending and DLC, there are no plans for a DLC. Continuation of the story is a different matter, however, but we have released everything we had and everything we aim to release since the beginning of the early access. The future of the series is now in question, as the feedback, user reviews, and poor media attention has caught us by surprise. Guys, stop picking on us or we won't make any more Trine. After this, I'm not sure I want more Trine. I'm not sure. This was one of my favorite series and I'm genuinely not sure I want to touch Trine 4. You disappointing, disingenuous hacks. Regardless, we will continue to fix and update Trine 3 The Artifacts of Power, as we've always done with our games, and I'm confident we'll get many issues fixed shortly, including some of the technical bugs and multiplayer problems. I apologize for those issues, and I ask for your patience as we work those out. From our perspectives, the launch has been reasonably smooth on the tech side. We should be close to a good technical state in a short while. Was anyone's complaint the technical stuff? When I've looked through these old forums, the complaints wasn't the technical stuff. Oh, there were some complaints about the technical stuff. Yes, don't be ridiculous. But the complaints...
complaint was, there's not a game. Def oh, guys, what happened? What happened is we couldn't manage it. We knew for a long time this is how it was going to look, and we didn't bother to tell you. We just kept selling it to you, telling you, it's early access, there's going to be more. And everyone was like, oh yeah, well, the game's great. And then you were like, here's the more, and we went, no, there's not. Where is it? And they went, oh, this is all we plan to release. <laughs> oh, why are you all so upset? Stop being so upset. Seriously, we worked hard on this. We will be more active on the forums next week. We'll probably be able to do some support on the forums and by email for technical issues. But for other discussions, we'll get back to next week. Right now, we need a breather to bounce back from all of this. And this is from Joel Frozenbite, Vice President developers of Trine 3 Artifacts of Power. And they did upload another response. It was a video response that appears to have been taken down, probably because this was such a bad take. Okay, wow, ah. Uh. Okay, okay, wow. I have not been this let down by a company that I loved and respected this much since Bethesda. I loved Trine as a series. I loved Frozen Bites work. And this, if this was a teaser, a hint of an upcoming story and they were saying, hey guys, we want to work on this, but it's costing us more than we thought. So we're releasing this part for $5, maybe 10. And if you buy it, we want to continue working on it, but we just can't right now. I could try to get behind it, I could try and support it, but for them to then be so out of touch with themselves and what they've actually produced and worked on, to release this, this statement that's so out of touch, I thought it was a joke. I genuinely believed someone had made this as a troll post that a real indie developer that I had deep respect for could not have written something that I genuinely thought could have been written by EA or Activision. I was planning to end this review by saying that I'm not angry. I'm just disappointed. Because I was. Because I loved this series from the bottom of my heart. But I just don't know what happened. I don't know if Frozen Bite never intended to have such creative solutions and RPG mechanics, and that this stripped down, hollow feeling version of the Trine series is what they were after all along, because that's what it sounds like in their announcements. It's kind of like Nintendo and speedrunning. The community is having fun speedrunning, and what they do doesn't hurt anyone's experience, but that's not what Daddy Nintendo intended, so he's pulling out the belt and patching everything he can. I have to wonder if Frozen Bite never actually understood what made their games incredible instead of just good, and that this is in some way their course correction. Maybe they really were too overzealous and had no real management. I've seen it happen before. The Cursed Treasure series has essentially died at the feet of its creator's hubris for the same reasons. But after I read that response, I would be lying to say that I am not angry. In fact, I would be lying to say that I'm not furious. I said it earlier, but I would expect this mealy-mouthed tripe from EA or Activision Blizzard. To see it thrown up by a developer that I deeply loved and respected hurts. And I know they said all this in 2015, and I'm a half decade behind the times here. But so are a lot of other people like me who are discovering games for the first time now, who are growing up and discovering these things. Who are discovering the disappointment of this game. And I know Trine 4 is out now. I looked into it somewhat, partially because this game was such a letdown, I genuinely didn't want to be bothered playing it. Partially because I thought maybe it might give some answers. And maybe, maybe it does. It looks like they went back to the 2.5D style, but on sales material and the wiki, it is pushing a revamped combat system, thrilling action, and co-op. Yeah, I know the others always could be played co-op, but it looks like it's really being pushed in 4. So yeah. It really looks like this new combat focus over creativity, puzzles, and story, all wrapped up in a gaudy coat, is what Frozen Bite was after all along. Worst of all, it looks like we'll never get to see the end of the story presented in Trine 3, 
as 4 has an entirely new story and their dev statement basically said, we're not going to be bothered finishing this. And I would mourn that loss. Frozen Bite was doing something amazing. But I know if I bothered, Frozen Bite would also tell me it's my own fault. In conclusion, if you see this game deeply discounted and you're not playing Trine for the creativity or RPG elements or story, then it's beautiful. They're absolutely right. It's beautiful. Like a bride in her veil and her beautiful gown and dress laid out in a coffin at the altar. Well, it's been quite a while since we had a negative one, and I'd say this definitely counts. Don't worry, we'll be right back to Incredibly Positive once again for the next review. So until then, stay tuned, that'll be coming up very quickly, and always remember, life is another game waiting to be discovered.